Okay, so now we're going to get into congressional powers. Um, so we have the three types of congressional power. Oh, by the way, I should say this should be day two. Um, so it should be either depending on if you're an A day or a B day. A day would be 320, March 20th, and then a B day would be 323, March 23rd. We're going to go through um, 15L through 17R. I know it sounds like a lot, but 16 and 17 are really, really simple. Um, I'm not going to explain a whole lot because they're pretty self-explanatory. Um, but we're going to go through the three types of congressional powers. We have express powers, implied powers, and inherent powers. 15R, you see that it says we will return to this page later. Um, it just makes a little bit more sense to explain these three powers, go through the expressed, through some implied. Don't worry, we will not go through all of them. That's too many to even count. And then we'll come back to the information that's on this page. So just bear with me. Um, so first we have express powers, and they are powers that are explicitly written out in the Constitution. They're also called enumerated powers. They are literally numbered. Implied powers are powers that are presumed necessary and proper in order to carry out the expressed powers. So for example, um, Congress has an expressed power to raise and support armies. So that's an expressed power. So an implied power of that is to force them to or force you to join their army, meaning that they are going to draft you into the military. And then inherent powers are powers that governments are presumed to, ha the government already holds. Um, so they don't need to be written down. Examples of this are to control borders and to acquire a new territory. These are the no-duh sort of powers of, of course they're allowed to do that because they're the government. Nobody really needs to talk about it any further. Um, powers that are denied to Congress are including but not limited to all of these different things. They cannot create a national public school system. That is given to them for the states. The states get to do a public school system. They cannot create, um, they cannot re require voting, require church attendance, so on and so forth. You can read. Okay, so we're going to flip the page to 16L and 16R and create these two T-charts. Um, one side, the left-hand side, is going to have the expressed powers, meaning the ones that are explicitly written in the Constitution, and then the other side is going to have the implied powers. You're going to do the same for 16L, or I'm sorry, that should say 17L. So this should be 16, this should say 17. Sorry, I didn't realize until I started recording, and I've been recording for about four and a half hours now for all of my classes, so 16, 17. Okay, <clears throat> yes, you are going to want to write or leave a little space for this because this feeds into that one. You'll see what I mean. Move through my presentation. Okay. So our first express power is to lay and collect taxes. This is also called the power of the purse. Congress has the power to collect money from the state government, collect money from citizens, um, and then therefore use that money to pay off debts and provide for all of its services that it gives us. We're allowed to borrow money from other countries along with people within our own borders. Um, I know what you're thinking, what the heck, and also that was 10 years ago. Um, so cannot imagine what we are already in right now. This is a spike from, yeah, you see what I'm saying. Um, the reason that we do this is because we want to, if we invest or excuse me, if another country invests in us, such as China, we owe 10% of our debt to China. Let's say they invested, just for math purposes, they invested $1 million into us, 
Okay. They said, here you go. Here's a small loan of a million dollars. Uh-huh. <laughs> from China. Oh, man, I'm brain dead, you guys. Okay, so China gives us a small loan of a million a million dollars. They are going to make sure that we are doing okay financially um, to in, and in all other aspects because they want their $1 million back, right? It's just like when you invest in a company or invest in a team or a person, anything like that. You... If you give somebody $100, you want to make sure that they are not going to die or get sick or leave the country or anything like that because you want your $100 back. That's kind of how this is set up, okay? That's what Alexander Hamilton was a big um, creator of our economy, and this was his idea. So that's why we owe so much money is because then people will invest back in us, and so therefore... They'll make sure that we're doing okay, that our economy and everything will be doing okay. So that way we can survive. Okay, so we also, as Congress, have the power to regulate foreign and interstate trade. We have the right to make rules for becoming a citizen, which is called naturalization. And we also have, because you are a citizen, you can now benefit from bankruptcy laws, meaning if you're debts are so high that you will never be able to pay them back um, without <clears throat> selling your house or selling, I don't know, other things, um, the government will kind of give you that sort of safety net and say, hey, um, we got you. Let's set up a payment plan for you to either pull you back up to zero um, or that way you can settle your debts through smaller amounts of payments rather than thousands and thousands of dollars, sometimes even millions. Next one is to coin money and regulate its value, um, and then also to regulate weights and measures. So we decided that we were going to use pounds instead of kilos, um, and then inches and feet instead of centimeters and meters, um, we decided to do this in order to separate ourselves as much as possible from Britain. Um, same with, like, we, are, we have miles instead of um, kilometers, so on. We also have the right to punish counterfeiters. If you see this machine and you're like, oh, that's in my Uncle Sam's, oh, <laughs> Uncle Sam, uh, Uncle Sam's basement. Um, I've always wondered what that was. He told me it was a time machine. No, no, it's a counterfeit money machine. Uh, Uncle Sam's going to jail. Uh, they also have the power to establish post offices and postal roads. They have the power to grant patents and copyrights. Um, patents are for tangible things, such as the light bulb. Um, and then copyrights are for your intellectual property. So things like books, songs, music, etc. They have the power to create federal courts below the Supreme Court. So we have this up here. This is our Supreme Court. Below that, we have the Court of Appeals. And below that, we have the just federal district courts. So if you come below, words. If you commit a federal crime, you will then go to one of these nine federal district courts. From there, if you wish to appeal, meaning have something overturned, you'd go to one of these courts. And then if you want to appeal again and it gets approved, then you go to the Supreme Court. So not it's kind of a filtering system, so that way it's not going, everything's not going straight to the Supreme Court. All right, and then we have 17L and 17R. So express power number 10 is to define and punish crimes at sea and international law. These are pirates, not like arg matey sort of pirates, but like Somalian pirates. Captain Phillips, I am the captain now type of pirates, okay? We have the power to, as Congress, we have the power to declare war and to make laws regarding prisoners of war, such as in Guantanamo Bay. So there is a sort of gray area between the um, 
president, who is the commander-in-chief of the military. He is in charge of the military. However, Congress has the power to declare war and the power of the purse, meaning pay for war. Um, so there's a lot of sort of disputes over who actually has the power in all of those things. After that, we have the power to raise and support armies, further provide and maintain a military, and then to make laws governing all military forces. These are kind of this 12, 13, 14, boom, boom, boom. You can kind of see their thought process there of an army, oh yeah, a navy, and then all-encompassing in case we forgot anything. Because remember, they did not have an air force at this time. They did not think about marines or coast guards or anything like that. So, um, or a space force. So they just said, okay, well, in case we forgot anything, let's see why A uh, and all military forces. We also are able to summon a militia or a national guard. That is our version of a militia. Um, and they are also allowed to organize, arm, and govern said militia when they are called up to duty in other certain situations. This is a picture from the Little Rock Nine. Um, and then this is a picture from Hurricane Katrina, where um, the National Guard got called up to sort of help with um, search and rescues. 17, uh, the power to regulate Washington, D.C. and all federal land. Um, so this is Alcatraz, not Azkaban. This is the uh, Washington Mall. And then this is just a park ranger doing his civic duty teaching children about parks. Okay. Now, those are all of our express powers. But Congress kind of panicked and they said, oh my gosh, what if we forgot something? What if we um, need to add more to this that, and we're cutting it off too early and we're making this too weak, like how we did the articles? What do we do? So we came up with the necessary and proper clause. So this created an open door for implied powers to create that sort of gray area of if, like I said, like here, number 12, to raise and support armies is an express power, but what if nobody wants to join our army? Then the implied power for necessary and proper uh, would be to force people to join the army, meaning a draft. It's also called the elastic clause because it pr provides flexibility to the Constitution. So here are some graphics about the civic not civic, civil rights movement, right? That's Martin Luther King Jr. This is Lyndon B. Johnson. Um, he was a huge um, player in the civic rights movement, civil rights movement. Um, so one of the implied powers Congress has along that goes along with the express power, the third express power, is the power to ban discrimination in workplaces and public facilities. So the 16th Amendment, you do not have to write this piece down. Um, this is just additional information. If you did not leave space in here, that's totally fine. Um, because Congress has the power to lay and collect taxes, they have the power to punish tax evaders, meaning people that don't pay their taxes. These are all of the things that you are not allowed to send in the mail. Um, so if grandma has ever sent you a... $20 bill on your birthday, grandma is a felon. You are not allowed to send money through the mail. So an implied power that goes along with this express power is the power to ban the shipping of certain items in the mail. Also going along with regulating foreign and interstate commerce is the power to establish a minimum wage. Because we are allowed to borrow money, we are allowed to have what's called the Fed or the Federal Reserve System, meaning that all of our money, all of our paper money is backed up by something, gold, silver, so on and so forth. 
We also, because we have to make rules for becoming a citizen, we do sometimes have to regulate and limit immigration. Donald Trump is not the only one that placed a travel ban or an immigration ban, and they're not even bans. It's just, hey, we only have X amount of resources for X amount of people, and we cannot let more people in if we can't take care of the ones we already have. So we sort of have to limit and regulate that influx. This is Elvis Presley, the king. He was um, drafted into the military. Um, he was given a pardon and said, you do not have to do this. And he said, nope, I need to fight for my country. So he did for, I believe, two years in Germany. Um, so like I've said a couple times now, implied powers to draft military and the draft soldiers into the military goes along with the ability to raise and support armies. Okay, so now we're back at 15 L and R. So we wrote down all of this over here. Now we're on 15 R. Remember it said we will return to this page later. Here we are. Um, so because of the necessary and proper clause that gave us the implied powers, we've got two big groups, rather, two opposing groups. Um, strict constructionists believed that they should, people should only look at the Constitution as black and white, very limited. It should only be allowed to express its exercise, or excuse me, only be allowed to exercise its expressed powers. So you'll see down here where it says, should Congress treat the words of the Constitution like Plato, rubber, plastic, or steel? If we have a spectrum... Here is one side. Oops. Oh. Here is the other. This side is the strict. This side is the liberal. Strict constructionists, and here we'll have a middle ground. Okay. Yes, you have to make the sound effects to go along with it. So, um, we have strict constructionists. They believe in very limited government. So they would think of it as more so steel or plastic. Steel would be on the closer end to strict. Let's see if I can actually write steel on a mouse pad. Um, whoop. Steel. So steel meaning that you cannot really change it. You can't really bend it, break it, twist it, nothing. That's just how it is. And then plastic, I'm just going to abbreviate PL. I don't think I could actually get out the whole sentence. Maybe I can. Plastic meaning like if you had a piece of Tupperware, right? Think back to Napoleon Dynamite, right? Where you could kind of bend it, shape it a little bit, but at the end of the day, that's kind of what it's already going to be like, right? Where Uncle Rico says like you can pull it one way or pull it the other way, but it still comes back to its normal shape, right? Okay. So then we have – let me go back to – my little clicker here. Then we have liberal constructionists, right? These guys think, no, there needs to be more flexibility um, and think more big government because they are the government. So they should be able to use their powers how they should if they are, if they make sense. Um, so they think of it more so like rubber or Play-Doh, okay? Rubber is in this area. Oh, ours are hard. Mm. You. Trying to get out of the way here because 
I know I'm going to have to write Play-Doh on this side. But so rubber would be right here where you can pull it and stretch it as far as you need to and twist it around. However, um, it's still, when you let go, it goes back to its normal shape, okay? Play-Doh is on this far end of the spectrum, the complete opposite of steel, where you can make it into anything that you want, right? You could make it into a house or a pizza or a snowman or whatever you really want, right? And that's what a liberal, oh boy, this has gone bad. What a liberal constructionist would believe the government to be. Could be worse. Could be worse. So strict constructionists believe that it should be very rigid, very black and white, and liberal constructionists see it more as um, the gray areas. Do not think that strict constructionists are automatically conservative-minded people, are automatically Republicans, anything like that. And then same for liberal constructionists. Liberal just really means change, or it means um, like a lot. Um, so it doesn't necessarily mean that liberal constructionists are Democrats or anything like that. Okay, um, so by this time, you should be done with notes today from 15L all the way through 17R. Your next video is going to be over 18L and 18R. Um, and then after that, you will take a quiz over the notes that you've done from home from 13R through 18R. All right.